live. And this is <laughs> this is my first time doing a Facebook live. So today I just wanted to talk. Uh, talk about Jesus Christ, talk about the Bible. So, um, you know, just bear with us if we have any technical difficulties, but once again, this is my first time going live. Never done it before. Most of my videos is pre-recorded. So, but I just, I just want to talk about today um, how we need Jesus Christ. And that's, that's the main objective, objective of this short Bible study. You know, it's so much going on right now in our society. And I believe, and I know, the only answer is Jesus. And that's it. And right now, that's, that's not popular right now. Um, a lot of people don't want to hear that. But we need Jesus, and we need Jesus to transform the hearts of men and women. Okay, so this is this is what we need today. Um, and you know, I, I you know, some people say, man, we, we don't need the gospel. We need this. We need that. And it's not time for that right now. It's not. It's not time to preach the gospel. Um, I, I, I sadly I heard somebody say we've been preaching the gospel years and years and years. I'm like, no, we still need Jesus. We still need the gospel. And we need preachers to continue to preach the gospel no matter what time it is. Um, first Tim, Second Timothy chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 2 says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead by and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. So the, the Bible, t Paul told Timothy, he said, I, I want you to preach the word and I want you to be ready when people want to hear it and when people don't want to hear it. Be ready to preach the gospel. This is what he told Timothy. So we have to preach the gospel at all times because once again, and you're going to hear me repeat this throughout this uh, Facebook Live, but Jesus is the only solution. He is the only answer. We can't abandon that. No matter how people feel, no matter what's going on in our society, Jesus is the only answer. And God sent Jesus to die for our sins. And God loves the world. And that love was, dis was displayed through Jesus Christ. So this is the thing. So this is the only answer now. And, and what I want to show uh, on this Facebook Live is that basically everybody's in the same boat. Um, everybody's in the same place. You know, we all were born in sin. And our sin has caused us to be condemned in the sight of God. And that's why he sent Jesus Christ. It's very clear. So all of us, we're all just the same. We're all in the same boat. Okay, so this is this is where we're at right now. Okay, so I want everybody to understand that. So everybody has been born into sin. And because we're born into sin, we have chosen the path of sin. And we've all been condemned. And so we need the gospel message. <laughs> we need Jesus Christ. And Jesus displayed that love for us on the cross when he died for everybody. So every, once again, everybody's in the same boat. And this is what I'm going to show through the scriptures. Okay, we're all condemned. If you don't have Jesus, no one's better than the other person. Nobody's above anyone. No, no one's more superior. Everybody's condemned and everybody needs Christ. Okay, so this is kind of what I want to bring to that. OK, because, you know, right now in America, people are naming out a lot of different sins. And some people, you know, in America today and throughout the world, throughout time, times past, people have always felt self-righteous, which means they feel like they're better than other people. So this person's this way, but I'm not this way, so I'm fine. But if you don't have Christ, your everybody sin is sins are equal to God. And everybody's in that same boat. Okay, so real quickly, Romans chapter 1. And as I said, I'm just going to go to a couple scriptures just to prove this point. Okay, so uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. And, and in Romans, Paul, the apostle Paul, he was trying to show through the scriptures. Or he was writing to the church of Rome because they had this division with Jews and Gentiles. And Paul was letting them know that. No, the Jews are not superior to the Gentiles and the Gentiles are not superior to the Jews because Paul was trying to show all were born in sin and condemned. This was whole Paul's argument. So in chapter one, Paul was showing how the Gentiles was condemned with their sin because they rejected God. 
In chapter 2, he showed how the Jews, even though they had God's law, they still didn't follow after God. And then in chapter 3, he just showed everybody. Jew and Gentile is condemned, condemned to sin or condemned in God's sight. Okay, so uh, Romans 1 and 28, it says, And since they, did not see, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. And I'm reading from the ESV. Um, but so Paul, first he went into this argument about the Gentiles. And of course, a Gentile is just someone who's not a Jew. Okay, because the Jews were God's chosen people and God chose him to bring forth the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. And so, you know, Paul showing how the Gentiles fell into sin and they knew God because they had an understanding of God through creation. But then they rejected that knowledge. And since they rejected God, God let them walk in their own ways and in their own hearts. OK, and this is what Paul was showing in Romans one. And so, you know, God allowed them to uh, uh, do vile things. So. Uh, the, the scripture above it, it says that uh, men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men considering shame, shameless acts with men, receiving in themselves due penalty for their error. So what happened is because the Gentiles rejected God, God gave them up to do whatever they wanted, their own hearts. It's like God had mercy and grace. He was holding them back from walking in the deep depths of their sins, okay? Because you got to understand something like because we're born in sin, the human heart is just wicked and it will do anything, any type of sin. I mean, I mean, people don't understand the depths of the human heart. And this is why we need Jesus. But the depths of the human heart will commit any type of abominable act. This is what Paul was trying to show. But God in his mercy and love, he was actually holding and keeping the people back from doing these things. But because the people continue to reject God, they said, we didn't want to have knowledge of, we don't want knowledge of God. We're wise in our own sights. And so in our own sight, the Gentiles began to walk in sin. And what happened, they began to walk in homosexuality. So you had the women going with the women. You had the men going with the men. And this was happening during Paul's time and before Paul. Okay, so this is nothing new. But this was all, this has been happening throughout time. But this is because the people or the Gentiles rejected God, okay? And so, verse 28, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what not ought to be done. So, uh, in the ESV, it says a debased mind, which is a wicked mind. And, and if you read the King James Version, it's going to say God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And so, a lot of people use this scripture to talk, when they're talking about homosexuality. But God gave them up to a reprobate mind, they, and they stop right there at that verse. But you have to keep reading the verse. You have to keep reading the verses. And this is why I'm going to show you where, once again, everybody's condemned by their sin. So Paul didn't stop at homosexuality. Look at verse 29. It says, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. So now he goes on to show what a debased mind is, a mind that rejects God. Okay. And basically, this is the mind of a sinner. This is the mind all of us have until we're born again and accept Jesus Christ. So he says they were filled because of their rejection of God with all manner of unrighteousness. So he says anything unrighteous you can imagine, they were filled with this. Evil, covetousness. Now in the New Testament, the word covetousness means greed. Okay, so Paul is saying they were filled with greed. Now I want everybody to continue to pay attention to this. He's keeping everybody in the same boat. The man who chases money and loves money, uh, you know, spends his life trying to get rich, okay, <laughs> which a lot of people are today. They just spend their life trying to get rich. They're in that same boat with those who commit homosexuality, sexual sin, still in the same boat. Notice what he says. Malice and malice is just like <laughs> anger, extreme anger, like you're mad. Uh, you want to do hurt to somebody. You know, this is malice. That's what he means by malice. Okay, so, and, and once again, we know, we, you see a lot of people today, they, they're angry. People are mad. They're upset, you know, or, or just somebody makes someone angry and they want to fight. This is considered a sin. Notice what he says. They are full of envy. And we all, some of these definitions are, are self-explanatory, but we know what envy is. Envy is you, you, you see someone, it's borderline jealousy. 
and you begin to imitate that person, you want to be like them, you could begin to hate them because you're jealous or you're envious of them. Um, a person, when they're envious of somebody, like I said, that, that hatred could begin to stir up, which breeds jealousy. Um, imitation, you're imitating that person. You know, you see a lot of people today, they want to dress like their favorite rappers. They want to look like their favorite rappers or their favorite R&B stars or their movie stars. They want to look like them. They want to talk like them. And they don't have their own identity. Okay? They, they lose who they are. I mean, God made everyone original. All of us. He made all of us original. But most people are going to die copycats. Okay? So, but, you know, this is all a sin. Because, once again, you lose your identity and you're trying to copy somebody else. Okay? So, all that envy falls into all of that. Okay? Murder. Okay? So, once again, murder is not just physical murder. The Bible talks about if you hate your brother in your heart, uh, it's talking to Christians, you're a murderer. But that's just period. If you have hatred in your heart, you're a murderer. It's funny because most people don't understand that if we didn't have laws, <laughs> if we didn't have laws against murder, most people would go murder somebody they hate. That's what it is. This is why God says that if you have hatred in your heart, you're considered a murderer because it starts in the heart. Because God knows if there wasn't a law that stopped you from murdering, you would go murder. Okay? But that hatred in your heart... It's still there, but the law stops you from acting out on murder. Okay, so remember, it's just not physical. It's also, it's also in the heart. So he says, they are full of envy, murder, strife, strife. And that's just, man, that's arguing. You know, you see people, and, and I'm not saying that certain arguments, uh, uh, there are certain arguments that's not sin, but you know there are people who constantly fight and argue all the time. You know, people who are always in drama. You know, they just like getting into fights. They like uh, stirring stuff up, you know? That's strife, okay? And that's a sin, all right? Or debating all the time. Um, deceit, and that's just lying. That's just lying. I'm, I'm just a deceitful person. I'm walking in lies, okay? Oh, now, now notice, he's naming all these sins that the Gentiles fell into, and I'm what I'm trying to show, he's putting everybody in the same group. Um, maliciousness, and that's just, that's just pure wickedness, pure evil, okay? They are gossips, Okay, so he puts gossipers in the same group with murderers and, and those who are uh, 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 walking covetousness, homosexuals. He put he's puts them all in the same group. So to sin, it's it's a sin to gossip, slander, to 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 tear down somebody's name, to destroy somebody's reputation. That's considered a sin. Okay, haters of God just just hate God. You know, you got people today who. They just don't want nothing to do with God. I don't want to hear about God. I can't stand God. Or you might have an atheist who says, I don't believe in God. The whole thing is false. But this is also common sense. According to the Bible, this is a sin. Haters of God. Um, insolent. And an insolent person is somebody whose speech, it's very rude. The way they speak is rude. It's disrespectful. That's what it means to be insolent. Okay, so, so you know... <laughs> We got a lot of people talk like that today. You know, the, the fruit of the spirit brings kindness. Okay, but some people's speech is just the total opposite. Okay, um, haughty. And this is a person who feels they're superior, superior and they look down on other people. That's a haughty person. I feel like I'm better than you, whether because of what I have, what uh, the, my, my lot in life that I've attained. I feel like I'm better than you. That's a sin. That's haughtiness. I'm looking down on you. Okay, boastful. Okay, so a boastful person is a bird. They boast. They boast about what they have. They boast about what they're going to have. They boast about what they're going to do. It's the opposite of being humble. God does not like when we boast. Okay, even if you have, if you have a lot of money, if you have gifts and talents, you shouldn't be boasting about it. And you know, I, I, I mean, I hate to say this. I see people on Facebook all the time just boasting. Oh, I, I got this and I got that. Now it's. It's nothing wrong with telling what God has done for you, but you got to do it in a humble manner. You don't want to just boast about something just to show people. And a lot of times people that boast a lot, they boast out of insecurity. All right. They, they don't feel secure on the inside. So they need the praises of people. OK. Um, inventors of evil things. So <laughs> this is a sin. People that invent things that causes people to walk in sin. That's all he means. Inventor of evil things. Disobedient to parents. All right, we, a lot of people don't talk about that today, but that's sin. To disobey your parents is a sin. 
you know, you got you got people who curse out their parents. I mean, we're we're in a time. It's some. It, it, it was a certain time where people didn't even cuss in front of their parents. Not today. Okay, people are cussing in front of their parents. They will cuss out their parents. They will talk back to their parents. It's people that will get into a fist fight with their parents. Okay, so you know he's like, this is a sin. Now all this is because having a debased mind, a mind that rejects God, or as I said, the KJV says reprobate mind. Okay, look what he says, foolish. And that means, the word foolish means ignorant. And that ignorance makes you sin. It makes you do dumb things. Okay, and we see a lot of people are ignorant today. This is the human nature, ignorance. I do dumb things because I don't have an understanding. Okay, um, faithless. People lack faith today. Okay, they don't believe. They don't believe in anything. It's just faithless. Um, heartless. And these are people who don't have a heart. They don't care for people. They don't walk in love. You know, you can see someone in a certain condition, whether they're poor, whether they're suffering, and it does nothing to you at all. That means you're heartless. Okay. And ruthless. That means you just a type of person, you would do harm to anybody. You do harm to anyone. Okay. And now notice verse, verse 32, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserves to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Now, he says they, those who do these things deserves to die. That's what, that's what the Bible says. But you know what's interesting? That's everybody. That's everybody that passes through this earth has committed one of these sins. And the Bible says you deserve to die. You deserve God's righteous judgment. And this is why Jesus had to come. So once again, I, I'm trying to show this. Everybody has been born into sin and everyone deserves to die. We deserve hell. We deserve God's punishment. And that's why Jesus had to come and he had to uh, uh, give his life for all of us. And all we have to do is accept it. So this is, man, it's blanket. So this is what I'm saying. You, you can't fit. If you're not saved, you cannot feel like you're better than someone else because you're in the same boat. Before I was saved, I was in the same boat. And let me give you an example. Okay, let's say before let's say that I, I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm not saved. But let's say that I'm a father, I go to work, I take care of my kids, um, I'm a good citizen in this world. And then you have a drug dealer. And the drug dealer, he's selling, man, he's selling crack, he's selling cocaine, he's selling, he's selling weed, he's selling to everybody. Okay, he's selling to the little kids. And, and, and the little kids getting high. So you have the drug dealer and you have me. All right. And now you would do a comparison. You would say, you know what, Solomon, he's the good guy. I mean, and, and this is hypothetically, if I'm not saying, you would say Solomon is a good guy. He, you know, he doesn't do any of those things. He, but he's a father. He goes to work every day. He takes care of his family. And then you have this low life scum drug dealer who's out there selling drugs, don't want to get a job. And he's selling it to kids and he's selling it to all types of people and people are dying. And in your mind, you're going to probably say, you probably say, well, Solomon's a better person than this guy. But in God's mind, that drug dealer and Solomon, they're on the same plane. They're on the same level because none of them know Jesus. None of our good works is acceptable to Christ. It's not acceptable. So it's like, man, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm telling God, but God, I'm a good guy. I take care of my family. I take care of my my kids and I, I go to work. I'm a good citizen. God's like, that's not enough. You need Jesus Christ. OK, God cannot see anyone righteous except through his son. So the drug dealer and Solomon is on the same plane. Same plane. We're both condemned to hell. We're both in trouble and we need Christ. So once again, today, you have a lot of people who feel very self-righteous, okay? I go, to, I go to work, I do this, do that, I, I feed the poor. You know, I go help out at soup kitchens. They feel great about themselves. That means nothing to God if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not enough. And so when Paul began to name all these sins, the gossiper, the murderer, the liar, the thief, uh, the adulterer, the homosexual... It doesn't matter. The rapist, everybody's in the same boat. And that's a tough message for people to hear. But that's that's just because we're born in sin and that's our human nature. That's why we have to thank God for Jesus. And I'm, I'm going to show you all this a little bit more. Jesus came to die for our sins 
so we won't have to be condemned. Okay? So right now, the only thing I'm saved, I've accepted Jesus. The only thing that separates me from a sinner is that I have Jesus and he's transformed my life. You know, I've had people tell me, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, man, you, you know, you look down on me because I smoke weed. Listen, if a person stops smoking weed, they still will be lost. This is what I'm trying to show you. If a person stops sniffing, uh, 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 stopped uh, uh, smoking crack and, and they're a good person in society, they still would be lost. <laughs> this, this is where the gospel comes in at. Okay, now now look at this. Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 21. And, and 20 verses 21 through 23. Once again, we're we're stick, sticking with this the same thing. Everybody's been condemned. It says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and prophets bear witness to it. So God's righteousness is seen without the law, apart from the law, which is the law that God gave to Moses for the children of Israel. We're not, we're, we don't have to be justified through the law. We couldn't be justified through the law. Only through Jesus Christ. Okay? It says, um, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus for all who believe. So he says, God's righteousness for uh, through faith in Jesus for everyone who believes. And look at verse uh, uh, 20. Uh, look what he says. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He says there's no distinction. Nobody's above anybody else. Why? Everyone has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, we use a lot of times in the church, we quote this scripture, just quote it for, for Christians after they say, but Paul was trying to show everybody's condemned before they accept Jesus. So everybody's falling short of God's glory. Everybody's sinned. So notice what he says. There's no distinction. Everybody's on the same plane. Same level, okay? Adulterer, sex before marriage, liar, thief, pornography. It doesn't matter whether you're racist or you're not racist. Still in the same plane. None, none's above one another. It's just, man, everybody's condemned. And we need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, okay? Um, Romans 5, chapter 5, verses 18 through 19. Romans 5, 18 through 19. And once again, this is the, the, uh, the same thing. We're all condemned. It says, therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, that was Adam's trespass. When Adam disobeyed God by taking that fruit, he, by eating the fruit, he brought sin upon the human race. Now, some people, I've heard people say this many times. Well, man, if, if, why did Adam just do that? Why did he mess up? You know, if any one of us were in that place, we probably would have did the same thing. And that's why God condemned the whole human race. Okay? So this one, Adam's one disobedience condemned mankind to sin. Okay? That one trespass, it led to condemnation, which means we're all lost. All of us. And on our way to hell. But look what it says. So one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. That one act of righteousness, what is that? That's Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead on the third day. That led to us being justified. So it's through Jesus that we're made righteous. It's, it's no other way. His one act of obedience now causes us to be righteous if you accept him. Not by your own works. And I'm going to get to this more. Remember, none of your works is good enough for God. He only sees goodness through his son, Jesus. Now look at verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many will be, I'm sorry, for as by one man's disobedience, disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. So because of one man's disobedience, all of us are sinners. But wait a minute, so I'm telling you, I, 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 give, I give to the poor. I've never killed anybody. I've, I've, I've just been, I've, I've never hit my wife. You, the wife, she's like, I cook for my husband. I do all the good stuff. Not enough. Not enough. Those, those works can't, can't, aren't, aren't going to get you to heaven. Only one way you can obtain eternal life, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the message of the gospel. Okay? Um, look at this. Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Okay? Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And look what it says. And this is talking about judgment day. It's talking about judgment day. Because there's going to be a judgment day. 
you know, I see a lot of people right now like, man, we need justice. And I'm like, it's nothing wrong with justice, but God, when God's justice come on judgment day, everybody's going to be in the same boat unless you're saved. Everybody's going to be in the same boat. Revelation 20, 11, it says, then I saw a great white throne and him who, who was seated on it. So John sees this great white throne and God is, is sitting on the great white throne and he's ready to judge. From him, from his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, stand before the throne and the books were open. Notice what he says. John sees the dead, small and great. That means no matter who you are in society, you, the billionaire to the man living on the street, Everybody's standing before God. Every single race is standing before God. No matter who you are, you're standing before God to be judged. And by the way, this judgment here is for unbelievers. <laughs> this is not for believers because believers are already with Jesus Christ. This is for unbelievers. Okay? I mean, you know, you get, get, all, get the cartoons and the movies all out of your head where everybody's just in a big old line. No. The righteous are not judged with the wicked. Okay? It says... It says, then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. Now, on Judgment Day, God's going to have the book of life. And in the book of life, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he's transformed your life, your name is going to be in that Lamb's book of life. It's in there. If you've rejected Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to stand before God on Judgment Day. And God's going to open the book of your life. And he's going to show you all the works you did. And he's going to show none of your works is enough. None of your works is enough. His only standard is his standard is his son, Jesus. And he's going to show all the good things you did. And he's going to go over the bad things. But it's not going to be enough to get you to heaven. In other words, God's not weighing it on a, 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 a scale or you know, a balance, however you want to say. It. Like, oh, well, the good outweighs the bad. I'll let you in. That's not how this works. Only thing, only way you get eternal life it's through Jesus Christ. But Jesus also has to transform your life. And you have to allow him to do that. Okay? Now, so our works is not enough. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. And, and this, this talks about how our righteousness. Okay? Because, you know, once again, people feel like, I, I just got so many good works. <laughs> it's not enough. Isaiah 64, and 6 says, we all, we have all become like one who is unclean. And our righteous deeds, this is without Jesus, our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. You know, King James Version says it's like filthy rags. It's just dirty. So everything that we do, God looks at it as filthy if it's not through his son, Jesus. Okay? Remember, there's no good thing in us except Jesus. That's it. And then God accepts us. And he, he transforms us. And we become righteous. And we become holy. All right, so this is this is the only way. Our works are not enough. Okay, um, Job fifteen, Job chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. Job chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. It said, and this was this was Job friend Eliphaz, and he was accusing Job, but this one point he made was very good. Job fifteen and fourteen. It says, "What is man that he can be pure, or who or he who is born of a woman that can be righteous?" He said, nobody that's born on this earth can be righteous by themselves. You can't be pure. It's impossible. The only way you can be righteous is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. It's no other way. Okay. So Job said, born of a woman. Nope. That's, you, you're still going to be in sin. Okay. Oh, you may look at that baby and say, oh, that's the sweetest baby I ever seen in my life. Look at that baby. And that baby's still born in sin too. And it needs Jesus. Okay? This is why we, you know, as the, as the body of Christ, as, as the church, as saved people, and we have to grow in this, we can't look down on sinners because we have to understand we was in that place one day. At one point in time, we were in that place. And the mercy of God saved us and brought us out of sin. Okay? Um, John chapter 3, verse 36. It says, whoever believes in his son has eternal life. And whoever does not obey the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. <laughs> but if you don't believe in Jesus, it says God's wrath abides on you. All right. And, and what what does what does he mean by God? And, and what, how, 
what he means is if you don't believe in Jesus, even though God loves all people because he sent his son, he displayed that love. God is still angry with sin and God's wrath abides on a person who does not accept Jesus. OK, and I'm, and I'm explaining this what happened on the cross. OK, and I can't go into the, all the great details of it. But now Romans five and nine, Romans chapter five, verse nine, Romans five and nine. It says, since therefore we have now been justified, and that word justified means to be declared righteous. We've now been justified or declared righteous by his blood, Jesus' blood being shed for us. Much more we shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. So now the Bible says we're going to be saved from God's wrath by Jesus Christ. Now what does he mean by that? When Jesus died on the cross, and he was hanging on the cross. The nails is in his hand. And Jesus is a in, he's innocent. He's sinless. You know, some people compare Jesus to all the other great, great people, the great teachers. Jesus never sinned. He was sinless. He was a perfect sacrifice to God. And so Jesus is dying on the cross. And on the cross, he's facing the wrath of God. Or let me say he's facing God's anger. And he's being punished on the cross. But who is he being punished for? Because Jesus didn't do anything. He's being punished for our sins, me and you. He's been punished for our sins. So on that cross, Jesus took our place. Okay, he was the substitute for us. I mean, I'm just and I'm just breaking a simple gospel message down. Jesus took our place and he took God's anger for us. And he's been punished for our sins. And so there was an exchange. Jesus took our punishment and we took his righteousness. Okay? Very simple. This is the great exchange. He took our punishment and he took our righteousness. So if I accept Jesus and he transforms my life, I don't have to worry about facing God's wrath because Jesus already took it for me. He already took the punishment. But if I don't accept Jesus, I don't have anyone to take that punishment for me that Jesus took. And I have to face the wrath of God on my, by myself. So I want y'all... I want us to think about this. God's love was so great for us that he died for our sins and took our punishment. Jesus, innocent, son of God, never committed a sin. And he died for all of us. And let me say this. He died for what we would call the worst sinners. And I want everybody to understand. Everybody has a chance with Jesus. No matter what your past is, it doesn't matter what your past is. If you truly turn to Jesus and repent and trust him, Jesus will wipe your past away. Okay. So, you know, once again, you can't look down on anyone. Don't feel good about yourself. So Jesus died for the adulterer, for the fornicator, for the liar, for the thief, for the person who chases money, for the person who gossips, for the person who slanders. You name the sin, you know, for the drunkard, you look at your, your, your drunk uncle and you dog him out. He's a bum. You know, Jesus died for him. He died for him. You know, you look at that person over there. Oh, they don't take care of their kids, which by the way, they should. But you say, oh, they don't take care of their kids. They're, they're deadbeats. Jesus died for him too. This is the Bible. He died for all. He took our punishment and in exchange, he, ge he gives us his righteousness. And we're now his, we're now one of God's sons or sons and daughters of God. That's the greatest change. That's what happened uh, when Jesus died and rose from the dead. So once again, what is the theme? All of us are condemned if we don't have Jesus. Everybody's in the same boat. So what's, what's as, as preachers or as Christians, what do we have to do? We have to preach the gospel because God wants to save people. <laughs> okay. For, look, look at this. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter two, verses one through four. And this is what Paul instructed Timothy, Timothy, which was, you could say, a, a temporary pastor at the church of Ephesus. Uh, First Timothy two, one through four. Paul said, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people, for for kings and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Verse three is what I want to focus on. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, 
who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Notice what uh, uh, Paul told Timothy. I need you to pray for all people, especially he was talking about when they gather in the church, in the assembly. Pray for all people. Pray for those in authority, the presidents. Pray for everybody. And notice what he says. God desires that all people to be, he desires everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's heart. He wants everyone saved because everybody's condemned. God wants everybody saved. And you know, once again, today we're living in, a, in crazy times. And you know, it, it's sad what happened with George Floyd and what the cop did. You know, God's, a, there's going to be justice. Well, it's nothing wrong with praying for justice. But I want everybody to understand something real quick. And this should not make a Christian mad. If you're a true Christian and you have a heart for God, you, sh you should understand what I'm saying. Those that The cop that did that to him, he still has a chance to be saved. Even if he goes to jail for life, he still has a chance to be saved. God still cares about his soul. That's just the gospel. I mean, and we got to preach the gospel. He cares about everybody's soul, no matter who you are. God cares about people's soul. So we pray for salvation. Now, if that upsets somebody, then I don't know what to tell you. You got to check your Christianity. But God wants everybody to be saved. Now, everybody won't be saved. That's the Bible. People are going to reject Jesus. But God wants everybody saved because everybody's in the same boat. So right now, you know, everybody's talking about racism, racism, racism. And racism is a sin. It's evil. But you got to remember how God sees this. The racist. The adulterer, the liar, the thief, the gossiper, the slanderer, the insolent, those who have hatred, they're all in the same boat. Now, somebody's going to say, well, you're comparing apple to oranges. That's not the same thing. God's standard is not like our standard. His standard of righteousness is different. This is why we need the Savior. This is why we need Jesus. Okay, so I want us to understand something. So, you know, we can make people better for society. You know, man, we want good fathers and we want good mothers and, you know, we, we want killing to stop. We want all these different things. But the only way that people are going to be transformed is through Jesus. He's the only one that can change hearts. OK, you, you're not going to reform society without Jesus. This is why the Bible says we're getting close. We are in the last days and things are only going to get worse because only Jesus can change people's hearts. I don't care what you, you can set up different systems. You can do anything you want and the heart still needs to be transformed. We're not trying to make people better in society. You know, it's something because uh, there's many, there's times where I've, I've went to the abortion clinic and I, I would go and, you know, I, and when I, I don't, when I went to the abortion clinic, I would go to preach the gospel. That was, that was my mission, preaching the gospel. And, you know, I didn't go yelling as, you know, people go to abortion, go to abortion clinics and they're screaming, they're yelling at the, gir the girls that go in there and stuff like that. I didn't do any, any of those things. I just went to preach the gospel. But it's something how they went, th went at the abortion clinic, you know, they're trying to stop the girls from going in to commit abortion. Okay, fine. And when the girls didn't listen, that was basically it. It was like, you know what? Okay, we're done. And they'll come out and they just leave them alone because they're like, well, our, the mission failed. And it was fine because, of course, you, you want to try to stop a girl from uh, boarding her baby, okay? And we'll get into that on, on a whole another video. We'll get deep into that. But when a girl went in there, I would give them a gospel track or I'd try to tell them about Jesus. And, of course, I'd try to tell them, you know, don't abort your baby. And when they would come out, if they would come out, when they would come out, and they had already committed abortion, I would still give them a track. I will still give them a track. Because I'm like, you know what? Okay, you did the act. And now Jesus still wants to save you. He still wants to set you free. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. See, it's not just about reforming society. That's the gospel. We need the gospel to save lives and transform people's heart. We need the gospel. Okay? And you know, and I'm, I'm about done, but you know, today, I want everybody to hear this. And I'm going to read Galatians 3 and 28. Okay, Galatians 3 and 28. And Galatians 3 and 28, this is what it says. Okay, and this was Paul talking to the church of Galatia. They're, they're trying to go back under the law in the church of Galatia. But Paul said this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. 
There is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Paul, Paul was telling the, the church of Galatia, he says, listen, there is there's no more Jew or Gentile because some people felt I'm superior because I'm a Jew. Some people felt I'm superior because I'm a Gentile. Paul said, that's done. He says, we're all one in Christ. And I don't want to, I want everybody to hear this. Everybody wants racial reconciliation, but it's going to happen through Jesus Christ. And as a matter of fact, once you get saved, God, rec and I'm going to show this, God reconciles you to the body. And this is what makes the gospel beautiful because through the gospel, the blacks, whites, uh, Chinese, Arabs, it doesn't matter who you are. We all could worship together. Our hearts are all knitted, knitted together through the gospel. That's, that's the power of God. This is what he does for us. Okay? This is what he does. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Revelation 7 and 9. Okay? And once again, we have to preach the gospel. This is our only hope. And, and look at Revelation 7 and 9. Look what it says. This is John, and, and he's in heaven, and he gets this vision. And look what he says. He says, after this, I looked, behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes, peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. You see this? Before God's throne, there's every language. from A person from every nation, every tribe, doesn't matter who you are. The gospel is going to reach all types of different people. And you're going to see this perfect harmony in heaven. Different races, white, black, it doesn't matter. We're all worshiping God together. That's the gospel. And that's the message. That's reconciliation. <laughs> I mean, this is the power of God. No race above another. No race above another. You know, it's sad. I don't even want to get into this right now, but I, you know, I, I had a, you know, I've, I've, I've talked, I remember talking to a black Hebrew Israelite. And he's trying to tell me this and that, and telling me about, uh, you know, uh, all these different things. This race is above this race. And I'm like, you have not read the Bible. Everybody's equal. There's only one race <laughs> and we're all one in Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes. God used the Jews in the old Testament, but they were used to bring forth the Messiah, Jesus. That's it. All of us, all of us, if you accept Jesus, we all become one family and we're all going to worship in heaven as one family. It's the gospel. So I want to encourage someone, if you don't know Jesus, accept Jesus. And if you do know Jesus, understand that that this the the everybody's condemned without Christ. No matter what sin you commit. So so nobody's above someone else. If you don't have Jesus, you'll be lost. And it's that simple. Okay? So now, but we have to thank God for his great love. That, you know, people think, oh, God, God's this and God doesn't care about me. And God's, God loves everyone. And this is why he's given us, giving you breath. He's giving you time to repent and turn to him. Okay? This is the message of the gospel. He loves everyone. But you, before you understand the gospel, you have to understand that your sin is, is it causes, it, it, it you're condemned because of your sin or your sin nature. You're condemned in the sight of God and you need Jesus. Okay. Well, I thank you for those who did tune in and hopefully you'll catch some of this later. Um, but just take to heart what I'm saying. We all need the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's for us all. Everybody's in the same boat. Nobody's above someone else. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good night.